Hello and welcome, my name is John Dickinson, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how I used After Effects along with Sapphire and Continuum to composite a 3D motorbike I modeled in Blender and Cinema 4D. So let's take a look. Okay, so here in After Effects, let's start with the background layer right down here at the bottom. I'm just going to double click this comp. And for the background layer, I grabbed the picture off of unsplash.com. That's this picture here by Claudio Schwartz. Very useful to go to places like Unsplash and Pexels.com to grab some free images. There's some really nice factory ones there. I had plenty to choose from. And it's a nice big image. I've actually pre-comped it. You can see I'm working at 1920 by 1080, but I've got a fairly big image here to move around and just get really nice framing. And it was important that I got that right at first before I actually rendered out of Cinema 4D because I needed to use this as a backplate in Cinema 4D. And we're going to have a look at that in a second. So I'm going to come back to background. Now, I do have some depth of field going on here. You can see this is blurred. And I did render out the motorbike with depth of field in Redshift Cinema 4D. But because I'm using a backplate in Cinema 4D, the entire background was blurred the same amount from the foreground to the background, which wasn't realistic. So I decided to add the depth of field using Sapphire's ZD focus effect. And I've done that using a gradient layer. You can see here I've used S gradient and I got a very, very light gray through to white. And that's what's actually driving the depth of field. Let's take a look. You can see for the Z buffer, I've used gradient just making sure that effects and masks is checked. Otherwise, we'd have to pre-comp S gradient with this layer. And now with Z defocus applied using that gradient, you know, I can adjust things like focal depth and depth of field, and I get much more control over the depth of field without rendering it out of Cinema 4D and having it locked in. And also, I can get the effect where the foreground is less blurred and the background is more blurred. Now, I've also used S monochrome. Just turn that off. The original image was you know, quite colorful. I wanted this to be you know, fairly desaturated. So I've used S monochrome. And you can see I've mixed it with the source just slightly. Otherwise, it was going to be fully black and white. If I just reset this, you can see that's a fully black and white image. So just mix a bit of the source back in just to add a little bit of color in there. So that's the back plate. Let's go back to the main comp. And I'm going to solo that. You can see I've actually crushed the blacks quite a lot using S gamma. I've adjusted the gamma and I've also used offset dark. See, I've just dropped offset darks to a negative value. The further I go down, the darker that will get. One of the things I love about Sapphire is that many of the effects have scale lights and offset darks built in. So rather than applying an extra effect like levels or curves, I can actually do it within the effects that I apply. So in S Gamma, I can adjust the gamma, the lights, and the darks. And I can also adjust them individually across red, green, blue in all of those. Now, why did I make that so dark? Well, the reason is because above that, I've used Continuum's atmospheric glow effect. And this is going to add the smoky rays. There we go. We've got these volumetric rays coming in from the top right and it's revealing this smokiness in the scene. So I'll come back to the background layer and I'll just turn off S gamma. See how bright that is? So it really brightens up the whole thing. And that was way too bright. I wanted the background to be quite dark to match the motorbike. And that's why I've used S gamma there. Let's come back up to Atmospheric Glow, and you can see I've named it Volumetric Glow, but it is actually Atmospheric Glow. And this effect was introduced in Continuum 2023. And here I've used it for its smoke and also Volumetric Rays. Notice how Volumetric Rays is enabled. And in Smoke and Fog, for configuration, I've chosen Smoky Rays. There's a variety of different settings that you can use in here to fine tune including the black level and white level for the rays just to dial it in. I didn't want it to be too full on. 
I guess the idea was that because this image has a, a brighter area here, I'm just presuming that there's some kind of light uh, in the roof, maybe in this in this warehouse, and a bit of extra light is coming through here. So I thought I could use that as an opportunity to just cast some rays down this way to make the background more interesting. And I always wanted to add a little bit of smokiness in there as well. So it's really great that I can add volumetric rays and smokiness and the smokiness within the rays all in one effect. Okay, I just wanted to quickly jump out here and mention that I did use fractal noise as the source for the volumetric rays of atmospheric glow. You can see at the top of the comp here, I've got this mask, and this is masking out the fractal noise layer. If I grab that layer and move it down, you can see there's the fractal noise. That's just a nice way to create a source for the rays that's outside the viewable area. And at the end of the tutorial, I'll just show you how I've animated the evolution of the fractal noise to add some movement to the rays. So that's the background. Above that, we have the motorbike. All right. So what we'll do is we'll go across to Cinema 4D and I'll just talk a little bit about how I set this up for render and then we'll come back here. All right, so here in Cinema, I'm not going to go through this in detail at all. The main things to consider here is the backplate, as I talked about before. I set that up in After Effects first. And if I just click on the dome light, you can see that I've chosen to enable backplate and that's the image there. And the reason I needed to put the backplate in was because I wanted to use a floor and a shadow catcher to catch the shadows so I could composite this in After Effects onto this image and have it look as if it was you know, parked inside this factory and casting shadows on the floor. A couple of things to notice here is that for environment, I have replace alpha channel checked. And if I click on the redshift object tag on the floor, notice under mat that it's enabled and shadow is enabled and effects alpha is enabled. So when I render that out, I'll be casting some really nice shadows onto that floor. Now to learn more about compositing with Redshift, just check out YouTube. Type in Redshift Cinema 4D Compositing. I spent a, a good amount of time watching this tutorial. It's an excellent tutorial by VFX Central. So there's plenty of information out there about compositing with Redshift. The only other thing I want to mention here in Cinema 4D, just have a look at the render settings, is for Redshift under the AOV Manager, I've just enabled Cryptomat. So I dragged Cryptomat across and just doing a direct output of the Cryptomat pass. Okay, so that was rendered out. Let me just turn the background off. And if we just look at the transparency, you can see it's removed the background plate and it's only kept the shadows under the bike. So that's allowing me to composite that onto the floor there. But you can see the contrast is not very high, so that needed to be adjusted. One thing to notice here with the Indian Scout layer is that it's being used as a mat, but we'll talk about that in a moment. I've applied the S gamma effect and just brighten that up a little bit. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have it that bright at this stage in the composite, but when we start turning on these layers above, you'll see that the whole bike was way too dark. So I came back down the layer stack and applied S gamma to the bike just to brighten it up a little bit. All right. Let's turn on the next layer. This is HB right or handlebar right. And I'm just going to move up here. And this is this part just here. Let me turn that on and off. Uh, you can see how I've just changed the grade of that a little bit. And I've isolated that using Cryptomat. I'll just open it up. And I'm going to turn off the mat. So there's the Indian Scout render. And this is only a single frame. I haven't rendered out a sequence because there's no animation. There's the mat. To isolate that, I've used Cryptomat. So I drag the EXR that I rendered out of Redshift into After Effects, and you can see that's what I got. And you can see I've already selected that mirror. It's quite an interesting image, isn't it? There's so many parts to this motorbike. I could have um, maybe rendered a few less levels from the Cryptomat, but I, I was interested to see just how many different colors I could get, how many different parts would be recognized. And obviously everything that's visible in Redshift 
has its own cryptomat, even down to the little uh, links in the keychain. So I was able to isolate that using cryptomat. I'm just quickly reset that actually. And once cryptomats apply the cryptomat effect, I just basically click on the parts that I want to add to the mat. Didn't want that one. I think I, no, I didn't want that one either, just that. And by choosing RGB, or I matted RGBA. You can see that creates the mat. And for the Indian scout layer, I've just chosen that as the mat, like that. So that isolated that. And to that, I've applied the curves effect. You can see I've just brought down the reds in the midtones and just brightened up the shadows a little bit just to make it a little bit brighter. The idea was that I wanted that side of the bike to feel like it was within the volumetric rays. Now with it turned off, it kind of sits in front of the rays, but just made a little bit lighter and a little bit more blue makes it feel like it's hopefully, you know, within those rays, the rays are more forward. So that's a really handy use of Cryptomat. Okay, now above that, if I turn it on and off, you can see how it's brightening up parts of the engine here and also the gas tank. I'm going to leave that layer off just for a moment and we'll come back to that. That's kind of linked to the gamma that I applied to the Indian Scout layer because when I added all of these layers above, everything was too dark. So I wanted to just pop parts of the engine out because they were disappearing into darkness. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Just leave that off for now. Just come down now. Now, down here you can see that the bike is casting shadows, but the contact shadows with the floor are almost you know, non-existent, and it looks like the bike's floating. Another thing to mention here is what I should have done when I modeled this motorbike in Blender was just compressed the bottom of the tires a little bit using a deformer just so it makes the bike look a little heavier but by the time I finished this I just didn't get around to doing that maybe I could use something like mesh warp in After Effects to do that but I haven't done that it's just a little side note so quick fix in After Effects to add a little bit of AO or ambient occlusion was just to add a black solid in After Effects and a couple of masks and then just feather that out you see, it just adds a little bit of darkness around that and just hides that. And it helps it feel a little bit more in contact with the ground. And when I increase the contrast with these layers above, that'll look even more effective. That's just a little hack there. And in addition to that, I also felt that the shadow was a little bit light. I wanted to darken that up a little bit. You can see here, by adding it on top of everything else with the multiply blend mode, that's just darkened that up. I'm just going to turn everything else off for a moment. You can see, once again, I've isolated that using the cryptomat. So I've just isolated the floor. And a side note here, you will notice some edging. And that's the result of using the cryptomat rendered from Redshift. And this is just one of the limitations with cryptomat, but I didn't find it caused any real problems when I was compositing this. I'm going to turn that back on. You can just see a slight difference. See on the edge here. Just makes that a little bit darker, doesn't it? I probably should really, you know, mask that off just by just isolating the shadow part. Like that probably helps a bit. Because of having it darker on those edges is kind of affecting that kind of light wrap effect that you get when something's in front of a lighter background. It's almost unnoticeable. That little fringe problem with Cryptomat, I didn't really have, I put a word out on Twitter, I didn't really get a real you know, easy solution for that. Most of the responses were like doing matte choking and stuff like that. So just one of the things that I came up against with Cryptomat. Okay, so I'm going to turn on that and turn that on. With multiply and that's making that a little darker now. You can see this looks a little more like it's you know, touching the floor, which is what we want. Okay, above that we have a comp called indicators. If 
we just zoom in here, these are the indicators here, made of plastic. I'm going to turn that on and off. So once again, I've used Cryptomat just to isolate those. I did that in a pre-comp. And I'm just going to close these ones up. And just applied a little bit of exposure, just to you know increase the exposure, make those a little bit brighter. So just a little bit of fine tuning there. And Cryptomat works really well with this kind of thing. You can see once again, there is that kind of edge issue, a little fringe issue, but it's good enough and isn't really obvious. Once again, above that, I've used Cryptomat for the headlight. And I'm just gonna turn those effects off. For this one, I've just used a white layer. And that was basically just using Cryptomat set to matted RGBA and filling it with white. You can see by default it's black. I've just filled that with white. And let me just turn that on and off. So that's how the headlight looks without it. Yeah, I did model that and there's a lot of detail and it would have been nice to show that detail, but I kind of like the headlight on. I'll turn that on. So that's the source for Sapphire Ultra Glow, my favorite glow effect ever. It's giving me a nice big soft white glow and a bit of Sapphire Rays, my favorite rays effect, just to add a bit of sort of volumetric directional light. And you can see if I just adjust the S-Rays effect point, I can adjust how far that goes. I thought it was a little bit cheesy to have it, you know, really long. If it was a darker scene, maybe I could have had it longer. But I did like a little bit because it feels like it's affecting the smoke in the environment. So I thought a little bit of directional volumetric light was more effective than having none at all. Like that. I could also, with rays, just thinking about it, I could also add a little bit of atmosphere to that. Just increase the atmosphere. Let's see if we can punch that up a little bit. You can see too much is no good. But a little bit of atmosphere could help sort of bring that smokiness into the foreground. And maybe just increase the detail. Uh, a little bit goes a long way with this. Maybe just make that to just a little bit. Very nice. Okay, talking still about the headlight. Above that I have S lens flare. Just adding a small lens flare. Notice how this changes the color of the light. Turn it on. Just adds a little bit of warmth to it. If I just select that, move that to the side. It's a fairly simple lens flare. I used one of the presets and turned a bunch of stuff off. Let's just click on Edit Lens. And you can see I've taken one of the presets and I've turned almost everything off, but I added a chroma ring to it. So I wanted the, the warmth and the glow that it would add, but I also wanted a little chroma ring. And of course I can come down here with the chroma ring. Just click over here like this and just select the chroma ring. And I can make adjustments. Maybe I would like to make that a little bit longer. So adjust the angle width or decrease the angle width. So I've got nice fine control over how each part of the lens flare looks. I click OK. I played around with a bunch of lens flares and everything really looked like I just chucked a lens flare on top. I wanted it to be really subtle. And you can see, you can only just see it. Just a little bit. So up to this point, that's the, that's the main composite. Everything else above that was really just sort of finishing effects. And the first one I played around with was Sapphire's Vintage Color 3 Strip Effect. So this effect is designed to give your shots a uh, 1930s to 50s film process look. And I've used it just subtly here, reducing the amount and also the saturation as well as offsetting the darks, just to increase the contrast a bit. All right, now above that is the Sapphire Light Leak effect. And I haven't used Light Leak for the purpose of having a moving sort of light leak across my shot. I've used it as a color grading tool. And you can see how that changes that dramatically. I got the idea of using a Light Leak from watching the film Devotion on Netflix just last night. They have a really nice main on end title sequence which uses light leaks. 
and that uses some warmer light leaks. But this is a preset that is a little cooler. I'm going to click Load Preset. And the preset that I use is this one here, Soft Blue. Because I wasn't really going for a warm look, I wanted a fairly cool look. And the only thing I've really done with that is change the blend mode from normal to soft light. Just bring that back to normal. And you can see how that really washes that out. But soft light is such a great blend mode for adding some, as Chris and Trish Meyer used to say, instant sex to your looks. And there's probably no other better way to describe that. So it gives us the nice blue tones in the light leak. But by using soft light, it just gives that a really nice overall color grade. What a difference that makes. And it really helps integrate the background with the foreground object. And we're still not losing all of the color in the background or in the bike. Very nice. Above that, I've used the ultra grain effect. And really, the only thing I've done with this, I haven't even chosen a preset. I've just applied ultra grain. And if I just zoom in, I just dropped grain amplitude down to 0.5 and grain size down to 0.5. I just want it to be fairly subtle. But of course, Grain is a really good tool for compositing foreground 3D with background objects because when we place it over both of them, it unifies them both. So just turn it on and off. You see a difference. And gives us uh, more of that old style look. Now, above that, I've used the Continuum Magic Sharp effect. Just to give an overall sharpness. If I just turn that on, take a look, especially around the engine area. See how that's sharpening that up? And I probably did push it a little further than normal, but I like the result of that. It gives it almost like a, I don't know, an old style photograph look, or a, maybe even a comic look, perhaps. I just like the result that I was getting. I have isolated the bike by using the bike as a mat and you can see down the bottom here remember we talked about the Indian Scout layer with the mat option in recent version of After Effects you can now choose any layer as a mat so I've just selected Magic Sharp and for my track mat I've just chosen the Indian Scout layer so that just isolates the Magic Sharp to the foreground bike rather than sharpening up the background as well but I do like the result of that. Just sharpens it up a little bit. Now, the final two effects are a combination of sapphire and continuum. The first is sapphire half tone color. And if I just roll in there a little bit, you can see there's the half tone. And I've isolated that to the outside. I've held it out just by using a mask. I didn't want to affect the bike. Just wanted to add a more of a sort of, I guess, a kind of comic book feel. And that's using half tone color. Really high dot frequency there, just so they're really small. And once again, soft light blend mode. Bring that back to normal. And you can see the result is somewhat different. Just wanted a little bit. And above that, I've used Continuum's grunge effect. Just adding a little bit of grunge around the edges, and that's using the old cardboard pack texture. Now, Sapphire has a grunge effect, and Continuum has a grunge effect. The difference between Continuum and Sapphire is that the Continuum one uses actual photographs, which are useful, whereas the Sapphire one uses stamps. And which one you use depends on the look that you're after. I wanted actual photographs in this one, and I also use Continuum grunge because apart from using textures, it has a lot of other options and it has chromatic aberration built in. So I just add a little bit of chromatic aberration to it just by turning it on in Continuum's grunge effect. We just roll in here. You can see, especially on the tire here, if we just turn it on and off. It's just a little bit of finishing there, just to add a little bit of irregularity to it and imperfection. Now, I wasn't going for an animated look with this, I used After Effects as more of a still compositing tool rather than using Photoshop. You can use Sapphire in Photoshop, but doing it in After Effects allows me to use Continuum tools as well. Now, the last thing I wanted to point out is the use of CryptoMat just to brighten up certain parts of the bike. I'm going to find those layers. That's these ones here. 
So if I turn that layer off, it's a little, yeah, you can just see it. If I just zoom in, I could probably adjust it even more. If I just turn it on and off, notice how they get a little darker. And just by using Cryptomat, I'll be able to brighten those up a little bit. I could probably just increase that gamma a little bit more to bring them out a little bit more. I'm going to turn that on and off again. There we go. So it's bringing out the seat a little bit more and this mid frame and some of the guards and also the gas tank. If I go into the crypto mat and just come in here and I'm just going to view colors. It's easy enough just to select other parts of the bike just by shift clicking to add. And I'm just going to once again, just choose matted RGBA, come back to the main comp. And now we're brightening up those areas as well. So that's a really nice way just to help parts of the bike pop out. And we could probably, probably add this uh, little cover here where the engine's uh, key is. I'll just do that once more. Come back to colors, shift click, just to add that. I don't think we need the key or the keychain. And I'll just come back to Matted RGB. And that should pop out a little bit more now too. Yeah, just a little bit more, but not too much because obviously if I take the gamma too far, then it's going to flatten these all out, making them look a bit milky. So if things are getting a little bit contrasty and you are losing detail, Cryptomat's really good for that, just helping you to change the gamma on certain parts just to help them stand out a bit better. Okay, so hopefully you found that useful. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. Be sure to visit the Boris FX website to learn more about Sapphire and Continuum, and also how you can save money when you buy both by choosing a bundle or as part of the Boris FX suite. For now, this is John Dickinson for Boris FX. Have fun, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.